Welcome back. Thank you for joining me on um, another evening for a sermon. Uh, I appreciate the continual support. Uh, tonight is um, a heavy topic for me to talk about. Uh, it's not that I won't talk about it, but it rings so true in my own life that it's difficult to put a sermon together um, about it. So uh, bear with me tonight. Um, this was laid on my heart to talk about, and I knew at some point this specific um, topic we would discuss. So um, let's get into uh, our topic tonight, which is sexual sin. Um, like always, let's start with a word of prayer. <sighs> oh, sovereign Lord, give me strength here. Lord, be with those on the other side of this camera. Oh my God, please speak through me, Holy Spirit, be here and give me the courage to continue on. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Okay, first piece of scripture we're gonna get into is Matthew 5, 27 through 30. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Now, clearly, Jesus wasn't speaking about maiming yourself. We'd all be walking around with uh, our eyes gouged out or some limb on ourselves chopped off. Um, it was a metaphoric thing. It was symbolic. He was saying, whatever causes you to do this thing, get rid of it. Now, if you can, a lot of people will justify this thing that there's more good that it does than evil, but this thing still causes you to do evil. So if that particular thing, whatever it may be nowadays, uh, laptop, cell phone, um, the way you go to work or come home, maybe get rid of that. You know, it's, it's too much. You know what I mean? It's too much of a temptation. It's, it's too strong. And ultimately, the mind eventually, after it's processing something over and over and it keeps pondering. So, for example, if you're thinking about something over and over and over and over, the mind ultimately controls the body. And whatever you have going through your mind and you've repetitively thought about it and you've pondered it and you've meditated on it, whether it be good or evil, your body will eventually act it out. And so that's where the battle is won and lost in our minds when it comes to sexual sin. Jesus said, if you looked at a woman with lustful, I don't believe there's any man on this earth that has never looked upon a woman with lust. That means we have all committed adultery. We are all uh, um, um, fallen under this particular sin, and it weighs heavy on, on, it, on me, um, this particular passage, because um, this is what I struggled with. This was the vice that I had to deal with most of my life. And don't, don't buy into that lie, because that's ultimately what it is, right? It's, it was a lie that was given to us that was not only given to us, but it appeals to us so deeply because it is tied to a natural desire that we have. A God-given desire um, of, of sex and, and intimacy with the opposite sex because of reproduction in, in, the, in the form of marriage or um, the way it should be. So that is innate in us already. But Satan twists it and turns it and makes it sinful and filthy and dirty and we do things we shouldn't do and we look at things we shouldn't look at and we fall into this trap. Um, the devil is ultimately a con artist. He promises you all of this awesomeness that will fill that hole in the form of lust and sexual and sensual and, and freedom that comes with this because you're not getting it over here. It's not being fulfilled here, girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband. Uh, that particular thing isn't being done here. So don't worry, I can get you where you need to go at a cost. There's always a cost, isn't there? 
but he's a con artist. He he promises you all this stuff and all these rewards, but instead, it winds up when you peer behind the curtain, he's offered you very little and he's taken everything from you because it eventually will destroy you, this particular sin. From the inside out, it's like a cancer. It will, it will eat you away on the inside. It's all you can think about. It's, it's the one sin that you do against yourself. You're doing this sin against the temple of God, which is your body. And we're going to get into that later. Don't, don't buy into that lie. It is so difficult to pull yourself away from that once you have dipped your toe or once you have tried it out. Because it always starts with a taste. Just a little bit. And then you're way, way far down the rabbit hole than you thought you'd ever be. The next piece of scripture is 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 20. Flee from sexual morality. All other sins a person commits are outside of the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, whom is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. This particular sin is going to come. It's going to come. There, there, it's, it's not if, it's when. And when it does come, you can't stick around. You have to run. You have to be like Joseph and Potiphar's wife. He had to have known in that moment if he would have stuck around, he would have fallen. I'm sure Potiphar's wife was very beautiful and she was very alluring and she over and over tried to get him to do these things with her. And it, it's, finally he said, I, I have to actually physically leave. I can't be here anymore. It's too strong. It's too strong. The temptation is too hot. We cannot, we cannot deal with it on our own. We have to flee. We have to leave. People often say it's their body. They should be able to do with it what they want, as they wish. But really, they end up being enslaved to their own desires. I know that word is uh, very political and, and it touches on a lot of uh, feelings of different people, but I don't care. I'm gonna talk about it because ultimately we're all slaves. You're either slaves to your own desires or you're slaves to God's desires, but you can't do both. You can't serve two masters. You can't serve you or the world or, or this stuff over here, the evil desires, and then still serve this, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the will of the Father. You can't make validation for the one and then turn around and try to do the other as well. You have to be fighting. Now, I'm not saying that you don't struggle. For goodness sakes, I still struggle. Everyone struggles. There's not a preacher in this, in this, uh, uh, on this planet that gets in front on the pulpit that ha doesn't have something he struggles with. Everyone struggles. But it's when it turns from not only a struggle anymore, but now it's accepted. You've stopped fighting. You're tired. It's too much. You've compromised and you've just accepted this as a way of life. That's when it becomes a problem. You have to keep fighting. And this is a fight that, that will never stop. It will never stop. Us as Christians were bought. We were purchased. We were bought. Just like they do at an auction. We were bought with a price of Christ's blood. We were bought. We are, we, he owns us. If you've given your life to Jesus, you are his. And you should act accordingly. You should live out your lives in service to the true master, Jesus Christ, our teacher, our master. But this sin, this particular sin, 
it drives such a big wedge in between what God is wanting us to do and what the world is telling us we should do. And it just gets pounded and pounded and pounded into us because it's everywhere. More than any other sin in my eyes, that's the one that's everywhere. How people dress, how things are advertised, marketing, ads, television, internet, yada, yada, yada. You could go on for days. It's sex everywhere. Lust, the desires of the flesh. That's what's out there. The internet has made it so easy to casually participate in this particular sin. 50 to 100 years ago, you had to be real skeevy and, and, and go down the dark alley or go into the movie theater on the wrong side of town. You really had to work at it. You couldn't do it in your own home. There was wholesome stuff on television for the most part. This wasn't easily accessible, but now it's mainstream. Goodness sakes, some of the television that's on nowadays might as well be softcore porn. And you don't have to go anywhere. Boop, 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 boop. There it is. Get after it. And this particular sin is tied to something, isn't it? It's tied to a dopamine dump when you orgasm or when you do anything that has to do with sexual intent. So that action is now tied to this desire. So anytime you go to do this thing, it's tied to this. So it's almost like a double whammy. You're lusting with your eyes and you're defiling God's temple in one foul swoop. And this uh, this struggle has been my own for almost 15 to 20 years. And it starts when we're young. We slipped up and went to that one website. And then, oh man, that was, I like that. And then it turned into something else. And then we were kind of being sneaky because we were trying to go further and further and further down that rabbit hole because we liked the way it felt because it was tied to something else. Something we'd never experienced before. Something that was meant for marriage, but the world says, hey, you got to have fun now. Enjoy yourself now. It's all about now. It's all about you. Get after it. Freedom. It's your body. Do what you want with it. And as young men, a lot of us buy into that lie. And it puts us on a trajectory to go deeper and deeper and deeper into this maddening hole that is pornography, that is lust. Um, it, it gets so dark, uh, sometimes it leads to prostitution. Um, it, it can lead to uh, thoughts of uh, same-sex sexual things, deviancy, orgies, debauchery. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. I could sit here with you all night and tell you all the different rabbit holes. Uh, the start of seeing a naked woman or a naked man can go down. It is dangerous. Take it, take my word from it. Okay, I've snapped so many laptops in half because I was just over this, but it's a plague, it's a cancer. You have to run from this. This one here, I, I, I'm not saying greed and envy and, and, uh, and uh, um, uh, murder and all these other things aren't terrible as well, but this particular sin like we just read it's a sin against your own body. You're not sinning against somebody else. You're sinning against yourself. It's a self-destructive sin. Um, our next piece of scripture is Romans 1, 24-28. Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to lust, shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. 
men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. Therefore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so that they do what ought not to be done. When you first start on this path, I speak to probably 95% of men in America. I don't know how this is being played in other parts of the world. I'm sure it's still bad, but I can only speak for my own country. Um, as a believer, now I'm speaking about believers that have fallen into this net. When you first start going down this path, you get that knock on your chest. Hey, blood gets a little, you know, a little hot. You get that feeling like this isn't right. But it felt good, right? So you kind of kept going. And then you'd get it again. Hey, don't do that. But I liked it. And you keep going. And then the knock gets kind of quieter. Hey, don't do that. And you keep ignoring and ignoring this, this, this holy, the Holy Spirit that's trying to pull you away. And after you ignore him so much, you can barely hear his voice anymore. And you're just almost given up to this lifestyle that you're choosing, that I chose for a while. This lifestyle of self-pleasure and self-satisfaction and isolation. Because lust ultimately will isolate you. Especially the kind that we have nowadays where all you have to do is sit behind a screen with a box of tissues. No one else is there. You can sit in your house for hours, all day long, and just be there, sitting in that sin. Bottom line, we're all slaves. We are all slaves whether you want to admit it or not. You're a slave to something your money, your possessions, this world, your lustful desires, your family. And I, I, I know, I said, oh, he said family. If you're putting your family before God, that's not right. He should be, it's to seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. Seek first, seek first. The disciples had families. Peter had a wife. If you read the scriptures, his mother-in-law, mother-in-law, that means he was married. He left everything to follow Jesus. If you were reading, when I was reading that passage, if you were following along, you said after, it said after a while, God gave them up to a depraved mind. And it started to, you, you saw it kind of snowball in the scripture. They started to trade things, sexual things they shouldn't be doing. Then the women were with the women and the men were with the men. And then it became even worse and shameful lust. And it just got out of control. It's like a wildfire. It starts with just a little match. And the match gets hot. And it lights a passion. And that passion burns red hot. And then you try to fuel it because it feels good. It's all tied to how it feels. Let me tell you something. Um... This particular sin will destroy you. And when you're looking at your computer screen, or you're looking at your phone screen, or you're looking at the television screen, and you're doing this act, you're watching this particular sexual sin on television or any kind of screen, and you finish your business on your end, and the screen goes black, and the only thing looking at you is the reflection of yourself in the screen. That is a terrible feeling because it's looking at you in the state you're in. I can't tell you how many times that's happened to me. Like I said, I've struggled with this. It feels like forever. And I've wept and I've lamented and I've uh, confessed and I've over and over and over take this from me. 
I want to tell you to not give up. Do not make concessions for this sin. There is a way out and it is Jesus. Get in his word. Get on your knees in prayer. It shouldn't just be after you've done this thing. You have to do it over and over and over so you can be filled up with the Holy Spirit. And when the time comes that you are about to fall, you're already filled up. And you have the strength to say no. But if you only pray after you do this thing, you are not going to be strong enough. I know. I know what it's like to feel like you're enslaved to something. And you do this awful thing and you hit your knees and say, oh Lord, not again. Why? Why have I done this again? I've been there uh, more than I want to admit. I have been there. And I have found you have to pray more than once you fall. You have to pray before you go into battle. Because if you're not prayed up before you go into battle, you will take that hit every time. You're not strong enough without him. I'm not strong enough without him. And we have to submit. You have to. You have to give it up. You have to give it up. I got to the point um, probably a year or so ago where I asked the Lord to just take my sexual desire from me altogether for everything. I would have rather have been a eunuch. I would have rather have uh, been without anything than to continue to struggle with this. I was willing to sacrifice my sex drive for this to be finished. And then it was alleviated. Was it completely gone? I battle with it every day. But was the fire burning as hot as it was? No, it was almost extinguished when I was willing to give up that. Find out what holds you captive. What is that thing that holds you captive? You have to get rid of it. It will destroy you. Don't be caught doing this thing. Don't be caught in this sexual sin. When the Lord comes back, don't be caught there. Don't be caught in her bed or his bed or in front of that screen with the tissues. Sex should not be taken lightly. This is a, this is a, 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 um, a reality in our society that it is just like going and ordering a sandwich. It's just taken so lightly. There's no fear in anyone anymore of God. I heard a, I was listening to a sermon the other day and I heard a, a gentleman say that he was pondering this and God spoke to him and said, sexual sin is how God tests, especially men, with how much they fear God. How much they fear God. When we're about to do this thing, men, and we think, oh man, I know what scripture says. And I don't want to be given up to a depraved mind. I don't want to lose my anointing. I don't want to not be convicted because I've done it so much. I've hardened my heart and it can't be molded anymore. Don't let it get that far. I've, I've been there in that dark place. Please don't let it go that far. Don't make concessions for it. Don't make accepting it. Don't feed that, that sin. Don't feed it. Because once it's big enough, it will devour you. It seems like we say, society seems to think sexual acts are okay as long as nobody gets hurt. Both consensual having a good time, it's always put under, we're just having some fun, right? We're just having a good time. But 
let's not be fooled, right? Let's just call it what it is. Let's just call sin, sin. Let's stop putting this garment up. Let's just, let's quit it. Let's stop putting this false, deceptive cloth in front of us and say, everything is permitted. I'm free. Ah, but everything is not beneficial. Just because you are free to do whatever you want doesn't mean you should partake in whatever you think you want. Some of those things will destroy you and eat you from the inside out like a cancer. The Bible is the standard of truth. That is what you should be devoting. That is what you should be using to put up against everything. The Bible. What does Scripture say? This is what I go off of. This is what we use. This is what, as believers, we should be going off of. We shouldn't be looking to YouTube. We shouldn't be looking to the world and the media, the newspaper. Well, what did they say? What does she say? What did he say? How about what does the Lord say? Let's go there. Let's go to the Father alone, in secret, on our knees. Let's ask him what we should do. Sexual sin is like a drug. It's like a drug. Uh, it's like, like a drug dealer will give you the first taste for free. Oh, how much do I owe you? Nothing. The first one's for free. Do you know why the first one's for free? Because he knows you'll be back. He knows you're going to come back. Because once you've got a little taste... He's got you hooked, and that's a steady income. Why is he worried about the first one? That's what they're doing here. That dopamine dump you get is, is, is as strong as cocaine. And so we need it. We want it. We desire it. It's all we think about at work, at home, with our families, at, at school, whatever. It's all we crave. Pray. Pray, 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 get in the word and run from those things that do it to you. Run from them. If you're with a group of guys that that's all they want to do is go to the strip club, don't, don't do it. Just say, hey man, I can't do that anymore. It's eating me alive. If you're with a group of girls that all they want to do is watch these girl movies that have the sexual scenes that get you all fired up, don't do it. Don't go there. And it's not just men that struggle now. It's women too. Don't fall in this pit. It is so terribly hard to climb out. You can climb out, but only because God has let a ladder down and reached down and pulled you out because you've sat at the bottom of the pit and instead of continuing to dig, you hit your knees in the bottom of this pit. You've put the shovel down and you've started to pray. And you pray and you pray. That is your only way out of that pit. This one was very difficult for me to preach. Not because I won't speak about it, but because it reigns true in my own life. I always appreciate you guys being here with me. And like always, I love you and God bless.